Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. May the Lord bless you. We appreciate those that's visiting with us today. Always glad to have visitors here at Northside. Now to you that's listening out in the radio listen audience, we most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during this hour coming up we can be an inspiration to you. Now if you have your Bible today, I want you to turn, will you please, to Luke chapter 15. I want to speak to you today on this subject, the third son and the parable of the prodigal son, here in Luke chapter 15. Now we oftentimes preach about the prodigal, we preach about the elder brother, but many times we leave out that third son that we find here in this parable. So we're going to talk about all three of them today, and I want you to turn to Luke chapter 15 for the reading of God's Word. I believe this will be tape number 178, I believe, but anyway, you could write in for the tape. The tape and the music and singing will be on the message, rather, on cassette tape. And just say, send me the tape on your last Sunday's message or on the uh, third son, the story of the prodigal son. Or I believe 178, I believe, is the number. Write in and request some of our cassette tape, and we'd be glad to get the cassette tape to you. Now, I believe this is tape number 179 today. Last Sunday is 178. This is tape number 179. You request a list of our tape, or, uh, request what you desire. We send them out for a gift of $3 each. The gift is used to help pay for radio time. The preacher has a birthday coming up on Tuesday. And if I could hear from you this coming week in appreciation for the years that God has uh, allowed us to minister for Him upon the earth, I'd certainly appreciate you writing to me. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603 is the zip code number. I hope you're turning to Luke chapter 15. I was reading the other day about a, a group going through a pasture, and in the group they had a Rassler and he was drinking pretty heavy and they kept telling him he's drinking too much but he just kept on drinking and then a very vicious bull came charging toward him and this wrestler reached out and got him by his long horns and around and around they went a terrible struggle ensued and finally the big bull just broke loose and ran away that wrestler kind of shook his head and said you know I must have been drinking too much had I not been, I could throw that man off of that bicycle. So sometimes you may do things and not realize really what you're doing, like that fellow. But I hope you keep a sound mind and clear mind and know what you're doing. In Luke chapter 15, beginning with verse 11, And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follows to me, and divided unto them his living. Not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, there wasted his substance with his living. And when he spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land. He began to be in want. And when he joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hide servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? Not perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hide servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. 
Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. He was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou hast never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. But this thy brother was dead, and he is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Now that's reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. Now you may say, Preach Edwards, you only read about two sons there. The one we call the prodigal and the elder brother. That's right, but the third son, more important than these two, and that third son is the son of God that gave the parable. He was the one given the parable, and he was God's son. So today we want to speak about the prodigal, the elder brother, and God's son, Jesus Christ. Now I want you to follow me in the message. We find that the younger son broke the heart of his father. The elder son grieved the heart of his father. But the third son always pleased his father in everything he did. Now that's the difference. Now let's take a look at the younger son. The one we call the prodigal. Now notice first of all his departure. He had a good home. He had good food to eat, clothes to wear. Had nothing to worry about. Had a good dad to help care for him and look after him. Had a brother there that he could fellowship with and so forth. But he decided and get out on the streets and travel to other cities and go places where they have no business. You have too many criminals out in the land today. The ACLU and these are uh, appeasement judges of appeal courts and liberals and infidels and modernists. All that crowd has helped turn loose many criminals on the streets and that uh, crime-loving gang, they left to turn criminals loose and crooked lawyers and crooked judges and the land today is filled with murders, with robbers, with thieves, with people out in the world today riding up and down the highways and traveling around looking for somebody they can rob or rape or kill or whatnot. And it's a dangerous thing for any young person to leave home and try to go out on their own. It's very dangerous and getting more dangerous every day. And you better believe it. If you're reading your papers, listening to the news, you know I'm telling the truth. Teenagers being killed every day. Then there's a drug selling crowd and the liquor crowd and the wine and the beer crowd that's filling uh, uh, homes with wine and beer and liquor and people drinking, getting drunk and riding the highways and our teenagers are committing suicide and uh, getting killed in automobile black legal accidents every day and it's getting worse and worse and will continue to get worse. You may say, Preach Edwards, why are you saying that? I'm saying that to let you young people know if you have a good home, you better stay there. You better stay with mother and daddy until you're grown or able to get out on your own and uh, be settled enough to know how to operate and, and earn your own uh, living and care for a family. But until that time, you're wise and would do well to mind your parents and stay at home where they love you and where you have protection. It's dangerous to get out here on your own today. There's murders every day riding up and down the highways, walking up and down the streets and, and just preying upon young girls and boys, regardless of their age, even from primaries on up, and sometimes even younger, just preying on them to get them, to capture them, to carry them away, and they'll never be heard of again. It's pathetic, it's sad, but it's happening every day. Now this prodigal decided he wanted to leave home. But when he got back home, he realized he'd made a terrible mistake. Notice his departure. The young of them said to his father, Give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance in routous living. 
and sinful in, in drinking and, and living and running around with wild people so called in that day and he threw away his money he lost it all now he had a lot of friends as long as he had money but when he ran out of money he ran out of friends it happens like that many times if you have a nice automobile and spending money you'll have a lot of friends they'll think a lot of you but you get in jail get in trouble get on dope get on alcohol and see how quick they come to your rescue they'll forget they ever knew you a man a friend indeed is a friend in time of need and you don't have too many of them today out here among the wild people of the world and so he left home he had a good home and he left that home he made a terrible mistake many of a young girl and the young boys done that same thing to their own hurt and have gone to a premature grave because they left a good home and went out into the wild wicked world secondly notice the measure of the faraway country verses 14 through 16 and when he spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in war and when he joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his field to feed swine and he would fain and fill his belly with husks of swine that even no man gave unto him here we find this young jew now feeding hogs if there's anything that a, a jew hated is swine meat and he was uh, feeding swine feeding hogs down there uh, taking care of them and eat the husk that the swines did eat there he was hungry he was broke he was ragged there he was lonely he had left a good home and now he's in misery there's many of a young person today they left a good home and now they're in misery some in reform school some in penitentiary some in jail they had a good home and had they remained at home and obeyed their parents they wouldn't be in that predicament. This young boy wouldn't listen to his daddy. He had a good dad that loved him. And no doubt his daddy said, Son, I would that you stay here. It's too wild and rough out there away from home and too much danger. I would you stay here where we can care for you. And the young boy said, I, I know better than my parents. I'm up in my teens now and, and I know a lot of things that they don't know and, and a lot of other young people out there running around and ripping around and drinking and so forth and I'm going to join that crowd and have a good time while I'm young. I don't live but one time and I'm going to live it up. And so he left home and now he's miserable. That's usually the way it turns out. Now he's miserable. And then number three, he came to himself in verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many high servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? He began to do a little thinking. Now you need to do some thinking about things of this type. He began to think, Now here I am down here, ragged and hungry, and feeding hogs out here, and eating the husk that the swine doth eat. And back home, they have plenty of food. And they have the fatted calf. They have bread. And, and they have plenty and a nice warm bed and a nice home in which to dwell and friends to associate with. He said, I have played the fool. He came to himself, but it was too late. He'd already left home, but he was willing to do something about it. And the Bible said in verse 18 and 19, he repented. He said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. It, it took brass and courage for this young man to make up his mind to do that. You have a lot of people today that make mistakes, but they have died before they admit it. Now, this boy was willing to admit he had made a mistake. A person that makes a mistake and willing to admit that mistake and do something about it is a fine individual with character and backbone. I've known church members, maybe get mad at the preacher or mad at somebody in the church and run off, make a terrible mistake and realize they made a mistake, but they'd die before they admit it. They'd go the rest of their days suffering and going like of spiritual food and fellowship they had in their church before they would admit that they made the mistake and come back to the church where that God had placed them, where they were fed upon the word of God, where they believed the Bible, and where they had good people to fellowship with. Some of them would die before they admit that and go ahead and cut their nose off to spite their face. And many of them backslide on God and quit going to church and don't go to church any place. I could stand here and name several 
that did that even here at Northside. Ran off over nothing. Ran off and then uh, rather than admit they made a mistake, then they backslid on God and don't go to church any place. Sitting at home backslidden today on God. Uh, rather than admit they made a mistake and did wrong, they'd rather stay in a backslidden condition until God lays a rod to their back if they've ever been saved. Now this young boy had character. He was willing to admit that he had done wrong. Any person ever makes a mistake and willing to admit he made a mistake, he has good character about him. He's worthwhile. He, he'll do some good for God if he's willing to do that. And the Bible said he returned in verse 20. He arose and came to his father. He didn't just think about it. A lot of church members think, well, maybe I, maybe I did wrong. Maybe I shouldn't have left my good uh, fundamental Bible-believing church and, and uh, maybe run off somewhere and join one where you starve to death and, and uh, just get in on the entertainment and, and support liberalism, modernism, and worldliness and so forth. Maybe I did make a mistake and still not do anything about it. But if they will admit they made a mistake and do something about it, then God can still bless them and use them as he had in the past. So this boy did that. He returned. In verse 20, he arose and came to his father. Now, it took courage to do that. Now, rather stay down there and starve to death, he had backbone and grit enough to say, I'm going back home, and he did it. Now, when you make a mistake and you have grace and grit and backbone enough to admit it and do something about it, you're well on the way for success. Now, notice in the reception, verses 20 through 22, we find he went back home. His father saw him coming, and he ran and met him. Now, this is the only place in the Bible where you ever find God getting in a hurry, and this is only in a type. Here, this father's a type of God, and he's running to meet that wayward boy. He didn't pick up a stick and say, I see my boy coming back home, and I'm going out and meet him. I'm going to whip him all the way into the house. He didn't say that. He didn't do that. The Bible said he ran, he fell on his neck, and he kissed him. And he said unto him, son, uh, his son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven in thy sight. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and, and put it on a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and kill the fatted calf. The father said, son, you're welcome back home. I want you back home. And the boy came back home through the love of his father. That is the reception was the love of his father back into the home. And the Bible said they all rejoiced. Now his father could have met him halfway down the road about maybe 500 yards from home. After he spotted him, took a buggy whip and whipped him all the way back and, and abused him and mistreated him. But that wouldn't have helped the matter any. The father was wise. He saw the boy already been whipped. He had received a real whipping down there in the faraway country. He had whipped himself down at the hog pen. He had had enough whipping and he was willing to come back. And do something about it. That's what God will do for you. If you're backslidden on God and you want to come back to God, God's not going to whip you and abuse you for your backsliding. God will forgive you and take you back into fellowship and love you and help you and strengthen you and help you to be a better Christian. That's what God wants you to do. And so he received a great reception. Then the rejoicing took place. They killed the fatted calf and they began to be merry. And they had a good time, good fellowship. They sang, they danced, they praised God. They had a wonderful time there in the home because the father had received the son back into his home. Read the story some time ago of a wayward boy. He uh, wanted to quarrel at his parents. He didn't like what was going on in the home. He was kind of a rowdy boy. He had done a lot of stealing and did some evil things, but his mother and daddy still loved him, and they pleaded with him. They prayed for him, and, and so he became very angry and very rowdy, and he decided he'd just leave home. And he left home and broke the hearts of his parents. They all advertised for him. They inquired about him. They couldn't find him. They'd have went on days and weeks and months and for a long period of time trying to find that wayward boy, but to no avail. They prayed, they wept, they lost sleep over him, but they couldn't find him. One day they decided just to get in the buggy. This happened back in the horse and buggy days out in the western states. And they decided that they would ride and see if they could see anything of him any place. They got in that buggy, this man and his wife, and they rode for miles and miles. Finally they spotted a group of people out in the field under a big tree. And they stopped and they thought, well... We'll see what's going on out here. Maybe they might know something about our boy. And when they arrived to the, near the crowd, they noticed dangling from a rope tied to a limb a human being. Oh, they said, somebody's hanged somebody there. As he came nearer and closer, that mother spotted that boy as her own son hanging from that rope. 
And she ran. She broke through that crowd. She threw her arms around that boy. And she kissed his cold blue lips. And she said, people, I don't know what he's done. He may have deserved this. I don't know. But this is my son. And I want you to know I loved him. Beloved, that's the way it is with God. God never gives up his children. God loves his children and always will love his children. And if you have been disobedient, if you have done wrong, God will take you back with open arms. God will kiss away your sins. Put shoes on your feet, a ring on your finger, and kill the fatted calf. And you can rejoice with God's people. Now we see the elder son. I want to say a few words about him. We talked about the younger son. Now the elder son was out in the field. He had been at home all along. He didn't leave home, and he stayed there. And so he came very near. He heard them, uh, the music, and he heard the noise, and he wondered what in the world is going on at the house. And the closer he came, the louder the singing, the louder the music, the louder the noise, and the footsteps, the dancing, and he wondered what in the world's going on. And then somebody came. He said, what's happening in the house there? They said, haven't you heard why your brother has come home? Your brother's come back, and your daddy has killed the fatted calf, and they're having a good time. Come on in. Get in on it. You can join us and have a good time. And still in doing that, he blew up. He became very angry. He began to pout. He began to look at his self-righteous rags, and he said, You know, I've been here all these years, and he never killed a fatted calf for me. His father came out and said, son, come on. Your brother's dead. Now he's alive. Your brother's been gone and now he's back. And we have killed the fatted calf and we're having a good time. Son, come on in and join us. And let's rejoice because brother has come back home. The elder brother said, no, no, no. I've been here with you all these years. I've served you. I've obeyed you. And now you've never killed a fatted calf for me. You've never given me a party. You never invited my friends in like this and, and said, now your son has come home. Didn't say my brother, your son has come home. And now he's been out here living with harlots and throwing away his money and living a very wicked life. And now you've been, you killed the fatted calf and, and you've invited friends in and said, you never did that for me. His father said, listen, son, you have been with me all along and I've had you here with me all the time. Everything here, of course, you've enjoyed. Now, son, your brother, he, he went away and got into trouble, and uh, he wasted his money, and he's been hurt, and he's suffered, and, and son, he's come back home, and I want you to come and, and join us, and let's just have a good time. There's no need of you acting like that, son. No need of you blowing up and pouting and, and staying out here behind the barn when you come on in the house and join us. He said, no, I'm not going to do it, and he was angry, and he would not go in. He found all the fault he could against his father and against his brother and felt like he had been mistreated. You know, I've known church members to act like that. I've known church members, you know, to kind of get peeved off about something. Maybe the preacher said or something happened and just get mad and, and just sit at home all sold up and mulled up and sit there and piled and and they'd give you anything in the world if they uh, could be in the church and, and be back with God's people. But they, they fell out about something and, and hadn't thought about it. It could be maybe part of their fault, all their fault. And uh, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be reasoned with. And, and just uh, sit at home and get mad and, and uh, criticize uh, uh, the church and criticize the preacher. Now, who's a loser in a case like that? Now, of course, the church would like to have the members back in and act like that if there's anybody that acts that way. The church would welcome them back and love them. But the church is going on and serving God and enjoying the fatted calf and uh, having a good time and feeding on the word of God. Who's the real loser? The man that's sitting at home pouting and muled up and won't go to church because he got his feet. He's a bird that's losing out. He's a bird that's not getting the fatted calf. He's a bird that's not enjoying the music. He's the one that's really going to be the loser after all. And that's what happened here to the prodigal, to the elder brother. He could have gone in and joined that crowd and had a good time and, and eat the fatted calf and said, Brother, I'm glad you're back home and, and you're welcome, brother. We'll have some more good times together. But instead of doing that, he just sat out there and pouted and pouted and he didn't like what they did in the church. He didn't like what the preacher said. He didn't like what the deacon said. He didn't like what the Sunday school teacher said. He didn't like what some church members said or done. I'll just sit at home and pout. And he's the real loser. And if there's anybody today listening to me that's doing that, 
I'm going to tell you something. Just don't tell anybody I told you. But I'm going to tell you, you're the bird that's a loser. You're the one that's losing. Not leading the church, but you're the loser. And it's going to cost you. And you're the one that's going to answer to God at the judgment seat of Christ. But sitting back pouting and not getting right to get straightened out and moving on for God. Now this young brother here, he was having a good time. The other brother, he was pouting. He got jealous. Jealous is a terrible thing. And uh, he said, uh, call the boy thy, thy son. You say it's my brother. But the father begged him to come back. Be with now, in the next few minutes, let's talk about the third son. The third son is the only begotten son. Now he's the leader of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the altogether lovely one, the fairest of 10,000. He's a friend that's sticking close to the brother. That's the third son. That's God's son. Out of all the three sons, he's the greatest of them all. Jesus is great. Christ is wonderful. He always pleased the Father. In Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17, And lower voice from heaven saying, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus always pleased his Father in everything that he did. The Bible tells us so. And then he glorified his Father on the earth and finished the work that God gave him to do. In John chapter 17 and verse 4, I've glorified thee on the earth. I've finished the work which thou gavest me to do. This is the greatest of the three. He's the son of God. He came down here to do a job and he finished that work while he was down here up on the earth. God has a job for you. God has a work for you. That's something that you're doing for God. Now you're going to finish it. I hope you'll finish the work that you'll continue on unto the end. He submitted to the Father's will. In John chapter 4 and verse 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now you to do the will of God, that's the meat that you eat. Do the will of God and finish the work. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written to me, Do thy will, O God. It's written to me to do thy will, O God. You to do the will of God at all costs. You to find out the will of God for your life, where God wants you, what God wants you to do, and there do the will of God at all costs. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed and said, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass me. Never it's not my will, but thine be done. Every step that the third son did, he did it to please his father. He did obedience to his father. He wanted his father to be satisfied with what he did. And the father was satisfied in what he did. He never distrusted God the father. In Luke chapter 23 and verse 46, when he came to die, he said, Father, into thy hands... I commend my spirit all the way from the cradle to the grave. The third son pleased his father. Now we find that the first son, the younger brother, disobeyed his father, left home, and there broke his father's heart. Then we find that the second brother mewed up and began to pout and act like a Pharisee and refused to come in and accept his brother's return, and he grieved the heart of his father. One broke the heart of his father, the other grieved the heart of his father. And then thank God that third son always pleased the heart of his father. Now it's bad to get your heart broken. It's bad to live with a broken heart. It's bad to be grieved. You know a lot of people have become grieved over things and just grieve day in and day out and grieve and grieve. And grieve. Did you know that will bring you to a premature grave? Did you know that's going to cause your body to get out of disorder and going to cause you to have problems and will cause you to suffer more and will cause you to maybe die before your time? Try not to uh, be grieved about things all the time. Look to God and rejoice as much as you can and praise the Lord as much as you can and sing the songs of Zion and try to be happy. God don't want you going around uh, grieved all the time. That's against your health. That's against your spiritual welfare. God wants you to brace up and, and uh, be pepped up and praise the Lord. And you have a lot to be thankful for. You have a lot to praise God for. God's been good to you. You have a lot of things that you can thank the Lord that you have. You enjoy God's good sunshine. Breathe God's good air. Eat God's food. Enjoy the wealth that God helps you to earn. And, and enjoy salvation. Many things you can enjoy. Just don't go around grieved all the time. But this prodigal son grieved the heart of his father. His father was very much grieved because that boy wouldn't come in. He loved him. He loved both his boys. And the boy wouldn't come in and join them. And he was grieved about it. 
to have somebody grieve over you, cause grief to your parents is a bad thing. You young people should strive not to try to grieve your parents. Don't grieve them because it's bad if you do so. You don't have to grieve your parents. If you do, then you need to check up and ask God to forgive you. Obey them and go on and serve God like you should. And so I brought to you today the three sons in the story of the prodigal son. The younger brother, the elder brother, and the son that gave the parable, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. You listen well. Stand to your feet, will you please, for a word of prayer. Our Father, thank you today for Jesus. Lord God, we're so glad that the youngest son is willing to come home. We're so glad that the third son loves us and always pleased his father and help us to do likewise as we sojourn. God, have your way in this invitation. Speak to those out in the radio listening audience. Speak to those here in the auditorium. And may Jesus be honored in all we say or do. In the name of the Savior, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now listen just a moment. Debbie's going to play a couple of stanzas while she plays for us. If you're in this building, you want to get saved, come back to God, join the church, or come forward for any reason. I want you to obey God. Walk down the aisle. We'll meet you and help you while she plays. Would you come? While we wait, if God is speaking, would you come? 